I'm not a furry, but my ecosystem is bigger than yours, huh? Did you ever think about that? Look at the transactions, rant. Hey, look, I like Svelte, but the ecosystem is smaller than React, so that's why I'm not going to use Svelte, Svelte Kit. This is the same message you might find on Reddit, Twitter, or even YouTube comments. The same copy pasta. Not exactly word by word, but the idea remains. It begins to become annoying and frustrating when you give people options to choose from, and their only argument is smaller ecosystem. And the truth? That is mostly a lie. Svelte JS ecosystem isn't even that small compared to React. Yeah, you are correct if you say that Svelte doesn't have that many UI component libraries, but even for that, there are options. Skeleton UI, Flowbytes, Felt, Felt UI, Daisy UI, and if you want to have more UI component libraries, go make your own UI component library in Svelte. Publish it, and then wait for someone to find it and say, hey, this UI component library is bad. I'm going to create a better one. <laughs> this, this is... <laughs> This is JavaScript, like, to the T. That is what, I mean, literally, that's why if you've been building enough JavaScript, if you've been doing it long enough, you built a build system in Grunt. You've built it in Gulp. You've built it in Webpack. You've built it in Snowpack. You've built something with Vite, and you've built something with TurboPack, okay? If you've been doing it enough, you've done a lot of build systems, and you realize, hey, man, this is bullshit. <laughs> what the hell? happened Wh what and yes i have built something in both grunt gulp webpack snowpack vite there was another one in between all those i think warren buffering wanted to create butt pack but i don't think it, i don't think it went anywhere hey where's the building where is the building <laughs> pretty funny all right, state management, but let's not forget, let's see, but let's forget for a minute about UI component libraries and move closer to the real problem. Let's take, uh, let's take it bit by bit. Now, when I'm going to, oh, let's see, ah, now when I'm going to start my React.js project, what libraries do I need to import first? Tailwind? <laughs> <laughs> That is a generic library, so it works on Svelte. Oh, I know, state management library. No one wants to use use Reducer, so let's get a better library. Uh, dude, by the way, state management in all these front ends is just such a whiteboard masturbation. You guys, y'all making fr these state libraries, you, got, you guys need to stop. You guys need to stop. Like 99% of these state libraries it's just nuts to use in most applications. Your zero user, simple to do MVC application does not need 40,000 lines of state management, okay? I'm sorry. I hate to tell you this, you don't need it. You could have just simply saved your single request <laughs> to the global object and called it a day. Have a little counter, have a little function, have one event that fires off, and ba bam it could have been done. I'm sorry to tell you this, but your nothing application with no users, with nothing other than a simple input field, does not need that. In React.js, there are so many options for state management. Redux Toolkit, Jotai, Zostand, MobX, and a lot more. Uh, in Svelte, we don't have that many state management libraries, but we do have Svelte slash store. This is great, by the way. SolidJS also has SolidJS store. Beautiful. Uh, a lightweight state management API that comes built in with Svelte.js. From the start, we get a solution for pro uh, for a problem. Instead of searching for a solution that uh, we can use that time to build something useful. Checkmate React. Checkmate. He also forgot like Redux and Rx Redux and all the other crap that goes with it. All right, styling. Okay, we solved the state management. Let's move on to some styling. Now I want to scope my styling to a component so that we can keep it... Uh, up backed with the components we write react has a solution for this css modules uh but we are cool and hype and we want to have some <laughs> have the styling in the same files as our jsx to solve this we need to choose a library from the list of css in js libraries let's see our options styled components css modules emotion jss more like emotional trauma uh with spell js we get a directly built let's see we get this directly built into the framework style block <laughs> Get f wrecked. <laughs> By the way.
the way, there has never been more emotional damage in my lifetime than styled components. Can we all agree that JavaScript plus JS or CSS at the same time is literally just the path to hell? It is so effing awful. It is so awful, and, and, and everyone always goes like this, oh, but I need to do this, and oh, it's going to be great. And you know what? Every single time you do it, you go, oh, this is going to be a great time. This is exactly what I wanted. I just wanted to create a couple styles on my component. And then you do it, and it seems great. Then you start adding one, and you're like, hmm, this kind of is a little bit weird. And then the next thing you know, you've actually crossed from Purgatory right into Dante's Inferno. And you're like, how the hell did I get here? Transitions. I want to have some really cool transition for my dream startup page. Let's see our options in React JS. React transition group, React motion, React move, dot dot dot. For Svelte, we don't need a library because the framework comes with the transition API right from the start. You probably start to see a pattern here. Svelte JS, it doesn't have that many libraries because most of the problems are solved by the framework itself. Oh man. I also love that they're just finally giving up the game with Svelte and be like, it's a framework. React is like, I am a library. Okay? I am a library. You just you just don't want to use the library without a meta framework. And, and technically, the library will dictate everything your code has to write and your server. And it, I mean, it's an exceptionally leaky abstraction to the point where everything you write becomes React. I mean, it's, come on. It's simple. It's it's a library. It's not a frame. It's a library. No, you're not. Just stop. Stop. Just call a spade a spade. Get over it, okay? Uh, uh, but maybe what I said before is a half-truth. Our app needs more than state management, style libraries, UI components, transition libraries. Maybe we want some custom library. Well, let's see how hard it is to use some random library inside of Svelte.js compared to uh, React. AG Grid. I've chosen AG Grid as the first example. The example on the readme looks like this. Placeholder right here, blah, 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 blah. Okay, import grid, 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 grid. Uh, C configuration, okay, I'm starting to lose emotional confidence here. Blah, 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 blah. By the way, this is terrible abstraction. I just want to throw this out here right away. The moment you start trading code for JSON, I'm just telling you, don't do this, okay? I'm telling you. Every time this happens, you will eventually regret your decision. When JSON, when you configure, okay, configuration is almost always a huge pain in the ass, you YAML engineer, okay? Uh, E-grid development selector, my grid, my grid, grid options, and our implementation is felt, isn't that different from the one in the readme? Okay, we do this, yep. We do all this, grid element. We uh, do all this, bam, 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 bam. Okay, sounds good. We are following the example almost bit by bit, and we just added a way to create a grid object when grid element reference is obtained, and a way to manage the state reactively, and we didn't need a React wrapper on top of the base library to make things work. Hey, by the way, nice styling. I like how your style goes off here, but this style stops right here. <laughs> Got him. Dude, you know, grid is always grid is always easy until it just is a huge pain in the ass. Can we all just agree that grid's great until grid's not great? Can we all agree? I always think Grid's going to solve all my problems, and then I just use Grid, and I go, why? Why? And I spend like 40 minutes. Yes, Grid is just table, but with slightly better things. All my homies hate Grid. Dude, I, you know, then you use flex uh, Flexbox instead, and then there comes a point where you go, oh, I hate this too. Why is my life always hate, uh, just filled with hate? Oh, it's because it's front-end development. Front-end development's hard. Just accept it. Uh, and it's not hard for hard reasons. It's hard for odd reasons. Like, reasons you wouldn't expect. Reasons such as this. Like, this is... This is just odd, right? This is just an odd problem we're looking at, right? And this is just... It's just one of the many problems. Oh, skill issue. Yeah, I just don't want to... I just don't... I just don't want to be a CSS engineer. Real talk. Uh, okay, we got data tables. What about some charts? You'll need charts in React. You're probably going to want to use React Charts JS V2. Dude, watch out because Chart JS, if you use V4, you better have ESM enabled because if you don't have ESM stuff and you use Charts 4, you're going to have this whole broken build system and Vite's going to shit all, the, all over the place and everything's going to suck your life away. Oh, you don't need to wrap uh, a wrapper in Svelte. You just need to use it as a library. All right, chart from auto, blah, 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 HTML canvas. Here's some data points. Here's this whole blah, 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 blah. Let's go. 
All right. Uh, you see, it isn't exactly hard to use the library as it is. We just need to take into account the reactive model so we can destroy and recreate the chart object when our data set is changed. And even that isn't hard to understand. No, no use state, no use effect, no use memo. I know someone that always called it use memo. I always giggled on the inside. Uh, conclusion. I could probably write a book just about comparing React wrappers to simple library usages in Svelte. This is actually a really good point, which people constantly overlook. When you do use React, you'll find yourself writing these wrappers around libraries. Like, everything you use isn't just the library itself. There's the React glue, because you need the React glue to make it even remotely performant, because it will just like, I reread no like crazy, and it becomes, like, impossible. I'm just sure that most of the points presented could be easily owned by someone smarter than me but the truth is that with react you don't just uh you don't learn to use the underlying library you learn to use the wrapper love that statement we keep writing wrappers for things that already exist then go on twitter and make memes about how many js libraries appear per minute <laughs> who is this person i love you whoever you are we are we are we are kin okay we we are somehow related to each other then we make more react js wrappers that use other react js wrappers and then in the end we have a jenga tower where just one brick needs to fall for everything to collapse this is this is great this is actually a great article the name is the sveltogen